into effect that you need to know about. Arlene Yang from Myers Name. Good morning, Arlene. Good morning, Lauren. Uh, one of the big things uh, we're talking about, uh, of course, is the coverage for when you get sick with COVID. And uh, a lot of people were wondering well, what's going to change in 2021. Can you update us up on the uh, paid leave for COVID recovery? Sure. In, in the spring of 2020, Congress passed legislation which provided for paid leave for people who are under quarantine or who had to care for children because their school or child care facility was closed. And that requirement only went up until December of 2020. And, but Congress, in its most recent law in last month, decided to expand it through March of 2021, but it's only voluntary now, so it's not required. The advantage for employees and employers to do it is that if the employer provides this paid leave, they can get a payroll tax credit and it can be paid for um, by the government. And so that's uh, good for both employees and employers to know uh, when that right. happens. And as far as vaccine guidance, there has been so much talk about can your employer require you to get the vaccine and in certain industries, uh, what, what are the rules now that we're seeing uh, as, as we start to get this vaccine rollout going? So we're going to be expecting to see a lot of changes in 2021. The United States Equal Employment Opportunity Commission recently came out with some guidance, which provided some information that's helpful. It says that employers can require all their employees to get vaccinations, but still our discrimination laws apply. So for instance, there are going to be employees who cannot get the vaccine because of a disability or they may decide that they don't want to get the vaccine because they have a, a strongly held religious belief. And the employer cannot just terminate someone because they refuse to get the vaccine. They're gonna to have to go through what's called an interactive process to determine whether reasonable accommodation is possible. And so there's, and then, you know, just in terms of health and safety, even when people start to get vaccines, there's going to be a long period where all of our rules about mask wearing and social distance, it's still going to apply for some time. So employers need to be planning ahead for the future and keeping those rules in mind. Um, there, are, there are a lot of rules that are coming into place and we don't have time to talk about them all, but my law firm, Myers Nave, we're presenting a webinar next Tuesday and Thursday that has information on all of the many, many more of the rules that are applicable to employers uh, How and information is on our website. Okay. Can you, can you say the website for us real quickly? Sure. It's myersnave.com slash webinars. And that's taking place next Tuesday? Tuesday and Thursday. Perfect. I mean, that's a great resource uh, for people. We're also talking about an expansion of the California Family Rights Act. Right. This is probably going to be the most dramatic change for employers in 2021. Most people have heard of the Family and Medical Leave Act, also called FEMLA, which provides up to 12 weeks of unpaid protected leave for employees with a serious medical condition or who are caring for a family member with a serious medical condition. And that law only applied to employers who had 50 or more employees within a 75 mile radius of the work site. And here in San Diego, I think only about 5% of employers had 50 or more employees. So very few employers were affected by that law. But with the expansion of the California Family Rights Act, now this unpaid leave is available to employees of who are have employers of five or more employees. So that's a dramatic expansion of the number of employees who have access to this unpaid leave. And especially now with so many people getting sick from COVID, this is gonna be something that employers need to keep in mind to make sure that they understand the rule, they need to update their handbook and policies to comply with the law. This law is already in effect today. Yeah. And a lot of people, even after the election with Prop 22, had questions about uh, AB5, Prop 22, independent contractors, who exactly that affected uh, and moving into 2021. Can you clarify uh, the independent contractors uh, for us, what, what that means with the passing of Prop 22? Sure. So we know that we had this AB5, which expanded the number of people who had to be treated as employees. That went into effect last year. At the end of 
the year, the legislature expanded the number of people who could possibly have some exemptions to that law. And it's kind of a complicated multi-step analysis. So uh, employers need to take a look to see if there are any changes that, um, that apply to them. And then Prop 22, I've had a lot of questions where people are asking how it might affect them. And it's really only very limited because it was limited to app-based drivers. Mm -hmm. So people who work for Uber or Lyft, but it's not gonna affect most independent contractors at all. Um, but still, even before these laws, many, many employers were misclassifying their employees and treating them as independent contractors when they should be treated as employees. And this can be very expensive for employers to have to deal with in the back end once someone has said that they're misclassified. So we advise employers to try to make sure that they're classifying their employees and treating them correctly from this get-go. Right. Do you have any prediction on whether that law passing could have a broader impact if we'll perhaps see more ballot measures to expand uh, different rights for independent contractors? I think that it, it's really, you know, Uber and Lyft are very deep-pocketed employers yeah. who are able to afford to get the ballot measure and then advertise for it. So it shows you that there can be changes that may be coming in the future, but it's gonna to have to be a very determined um, industry that's gonna do that. Yeah. Arlene, thank you so much for this information. Really uh, helpful to a lot of people. And of course, MyersNave.com, uh, a great uh, resource for uh, that, that uh, webinar that you mentioned uh, to dive a little deeper into some of these topics. But thank you for the time this morning, appreciate it. And we didn't great. even get into by the president so <laughs> great thank you very much have a great day well